in the public and the private sector. This is something that never happened under a Labour government, right? As shown in the budget, unemployment is forecast to fall every year under this government, but it also does show a public sector employment. And what's interesting from the tables is you can see the effect of Labour's policy before the budget, and you can see the effect of our policy after the budget. What the figures show is that under Labour's plans, next year there will be 70,000 fewer public sector jobs. And the year after that, there will be 150,000 fewer public sector jobs. The reason is we've had the courage to have a two-year pay freeze. I know we've all been watching the football, but that's a spectacular own goal. published some new figures today, but it's the figures that he's not published that I'm asking about. The figures that say that 1.3 million jobs will be lost. Why won't the Prime Minister publish these Treasury, treasury documents? Why is he keeping them hidden? Yeah. The, the, the forecasts that are published now are independent from the government. That is the whole point. That is... That is, it's no good honourable members shuntering about this. They now support the Office of Budget Responsibility completely independent of government. And I have to say to her, this is an extraordinary approach. Before the election, before the election, the Shadow Chancellor, then the Chancellor, was asked this question on BBC Radio, 23rd of April 2010, will you acknowledge that public sector jobs will be cut? Darling, it's inevitable. Harriet Harman. Mr Speaker, even the OBR says that under his budget, unemployment will be higher than it would otherwise have been. They say that on today's figures, they said that on last week's figures. Can he confirm that the secret Treasury analysis shows that under his budget, half a million jobs will be lost in the public sector, but even more will be lost in the private sector? The figures published today show 2 million more private sector jobs. They show 1.4 million people in work at the end of this parliament. They show unemployment falling every year. It's not really any surprise that the former Labour Minister, Digby Jones, said after the budget, and I quote, I think, why not listen? Listen. Uh, order. I'm sorry to interrupt the Prime Minister. I must ask honourable and right honourable members to listen. Order listen with some restraint. I want to hear the answers. Prime Minister. Well, the party opposite gave him a peerage. They might as well listen to what he had to say. He said this. He said, I think the sign has gone up around the world saying Britain is serious about sorting out its economic mess. He's right. Pity didn't say it when he was in office. Harriet Palmer. Mr Speaker, he hasn't answered about the 1.3 million. He hasn't agreed to publish those documents. The Prime Minister should know what abject misery this unemployment will cause to individuals, to families and communities. But can he tell us now how much extra it will cost in unemployment benefits? She doesn't seem to understand. Unemployment is going to be falling during this parliament. And in terms of publishing the figures, we've published the full figures. But it's not now us publishing the figures, it's the Office of Budget Responsibility. She's got to understand this is something the Labour Party now support. But let me repeat, what the figures show is that unemployment in the public sector is higher under Labour's plans next year and the year after. And when she gets to her feet, perhaps she'll tell us, do you now support the pay freeze to keep unemployment down? Harriet Harman. Mr Speaker, you can always tell when he doesn't want to answer a question because he asks me a question. He should recognise that under the OBR figures published today, unemployment is higher than it would have been other than his budget. And the same is shown in the OBR report last week. He won't tell us how much more the Treasury will have to pay out in benefits to people without work as a result of his budget. He won't tell us. Will he tell us how much less will be coming in in taxes as a result of fewer people in work because of his budget? There are going to be more people in work. <laughs> like, like, every, like every Labour government, they left us with unemployment rising, and we will be at the end of this parliament with unemployment falling. That is the difference. And she's got to, what my advice would be,
happy to look at the figures before standing up and asking the question. But if you look at the figures, you see higher public sector unemployment next year and the year after under Labour. She slotted it straight into the back of her own net. Oh, well, we would look at the figures if he will publish them. We know, we know that because, we know that because this budget hits jobs, the Treasury will have got less money coming in and more money going out. Doesn't that make reducing the deficit even harder and more painful with bigger tax rises or even deeper cuts in public services? And Mr Speaker, why are the Lib Dems just sitting there letting, letting this happen? No one who voted Lib Dem voted for this. The Right Honourable Lady talks about reducing the budget deficit, but we haven't heard one single proposal for cutting the deficit. We all know that they left us the biggest budget deficit in the G20, the biggest budget deficit in our history. We've been having a good trawl, Mr Speaker, for the stupidest piece of spending that they undertook, and I think I have found it. And it was, it was in the Honourable Lady's own department where they spent £2.4 million doing up the department, including £72,000 each, on two-storey meeting pods, known as, known, as, known as peace pods. And this is what they were for. This is, it is true, I'm reading out from, I'm reading out from our own department staff magazine. This is what it said. I think, I think taxpayers have a right to hear where their money went. This is where it went. It was a 21st century space of quality air and light where we can relax and refuel in a natural ebb and flow. That's what's happened, Mr. Speaker. They've gone from peace nicks to peace pods and bankrupted the country in the process. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Prime Minister